Now, please welcome the Commissioner of the NHL, Gary Bettman. The, boo the booing is okay. It just means you're hockey ready. We are thrilled as a league to be here with you. Welcome to the 2021 NHL expansion draft. These players will forever be known as the original Seattle Kraken, your Seattle Kraken. You know, Chris, this has definitely got a bit of a college game day feel to it. And, and so in your honor and in the honor of this event, we know how much our guys backstage love a pun. So we got a sign here. Uh, what is the challenge for, for this organization of putting together this first list of 30 original Seattle Kraken? Teams get to protect their seven best forwards, their three best defense, and their best goaltender. So we get to look after that. A little bit different environment this time around with COVID and the cap staying flat. So some different sort of tweaks as it went along. But you know, for us, when we're looking. We want players with character. We certainly want players that compete hard. We want guys that can skate and have skill, no question, in hockey sense. So we tried to build that kind of thing, and, and uh, we're starting tonight with our first look at what our team is. So from the Boston Bruins, the Seattle Kraken select Jeremy Luzon to introduce. The Sabres pick. Please welcome to the stage, Coach Lenny Wilkins. From the Buffalo Sabres, the Seattle Kraken select Will Morgan. And Lickers will now reveal the pick as has never been done before. And the pick is Dennis Jalowski. <laughs> From the Florida Panthers, the Seattle Kraken select Chris Dreger. Chris, welcome. By the way, this is the, uh, this is the big reveal. This is the... Brand new Kraken home jersey. To have my start here, um, you know, with the expansion team in, in Seattle and be a part of the Kraken is is pretty incredible. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited to get things started. From the Montreal Canadiens, the Seattle Kraken select, Kale Fleury. Grammy Award winner and a huge sports guy, Max Lamar. From the Ottawa Senators, the Seattle Kraken select, Joey Decord. From the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Seattle Kraken select, Yanni Gore. The Seattle Kraken select from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Crack Jack. Crack Jack. Forward, Jared McCann. We've got, we've got JT Brown here, guys. Your newest hockey analyst for the Seattle Kraken. He's going to show off his hand here. <laughs> Hey! Are you guys ready to help us make the next next pick? Yep. From the Carolina Hurricanes, the Seattle Kraken select Morgan Geeky. From the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Seattle Kraken select Gavin Bayruder. The Seattle Kraken select from the New Jersey Devils. Forward, Nathan Bastion. From the New York Islanders, the Seattle Kraken select Jordan Everly. Please welcome the newest member of the Seattle Kraken, Jordan Everly. This is the debut of the new Kraken road jerseys. You know, anytime you get that opportunity, you can bring a cup to a city that's never had it before. That's pretty special. Tremendously popular player, but he's with the Sanders. Please welcome Brad Evans. This is absolutely insane. You guys are crazy. I hope that these players understand what they're getting themselves into, because this is a special place. From the New York Rangers, the Seattle Kraken select Colin Blackwell. Well, I understand that Paul has a question that he wants to ask of General Manager Ron Francis. Paul, go ahead. Hey, Ron, who are we picking from the Flyers? The Seattle Kraken select Carson Torinsky. Part of the esteemed Granado hockey clan and a scout for the Seattle Kraken, Cammy Granado. The ownership, Ron, and, and all our, our staff has done to keep inclusion and diversity in mind from the beginning. It's laid such a strong foundation for our team. I'm just, I feel privileged to be a part of such a great organization. From the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Seattle Kraken select Brandon Tanev. What's going on, Kraken fans? What, what happened just before the picture was taken? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I saw a ghost, so that's the story I'm going with, and I'm sticking with that one all the way. Was that your reaction when you, when you heard about the Kraken selection? <laughs> From the Washington Capitals, the Seattle Kraken select VTech Manichek. These are the women, men, and the people that are building this beautiful state-of-the-art Climate Pledge Arena as we're getting ready for the first game versus the Vancouver Canucks October 23rd. His locker's going to be just a little bit bigger. That is Tyler Pitlick. Yeah! Yet more legends, big hockey fans, better known as 
Sonics superstars Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. I got a lot of respect for the hockey guys. It takes a lot of talent, a lot of struggle, but I think uh, we're going to have a good team this year. So I got the Knights. Then I got the San Jose Sharks. Ooh, but now, but now I got the Krakens. You know what I'm saying? So you know that's my home team now. So that's what it's gonna be. But well, let's get hype first. That's what I'm saying. Let's get hype first. You know? That's what we're talking about. Everybody, stand up. Yes, sir. Stand up. Stand up. From the Chicago Blackhawks, the Seattle practice with select John Winfield. We took uh, Jonas. Then it's going. <laughs> Yo, that's that's what we got. That's what we got. <laughs> it's the Alcracken pick, Jamie Oleksiak. How we doing, Seattle? <laughs> uh, all right. I'm loving the energy. You know, it's. Uh, I'm excited to get the season going. You know, the, I'm sure the building's going to be rocking. From the Minnesota Wild, the Seattle Kraken select Carson Susi. As soon as you, you know, enter the city of Seattle and get a feel for everything that's going on here, you understand the outstanding opportunity that's here. The message is this. Let's come together. Let's play hard for one another. And let's play hard for the uh, the city of Seattle. Realistically, I just believe that uh, since you know it's really a real physical sport. Mm -hmm. I think they just got to go out there and put a real physical presence, you feel me, though, early and often. Yeah, with the first pick, we're going with the boy, boy, Cali, though. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yup, Cali Yarn Pro. Cali Yarn Pro. Please welcome the all-pro linebacker from the Seahawks, Bobby Wagner. Glad it's an easy name. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want, you don't want Mark Chan's name? Yeah, I saw Mark Chan's name. From the St. Louis Blues, the Seattle Flex, Vince Dunn, the Seattle Kraken Select, Mason Appleton. From the Anaheim Ducks, the Seattle Kraken Select, Hayden Flurry. Notice, folks, there are now two Flurries up there happen to be brothers. What was your reaction? Realized you're going to be uh, playing with him. When's the last time you guys played together in the same team? I think we were probably five and three years old, so hometown back in Saskatchewan. So no, really exciting day for uh, you know my family, my mom and dad, and my brother. The Seattle Kraken selects from the Calgary Flames, San Diego. Mark Giordano. Hey, this is the first time in my career I've ever been drafted, so thank you to the Kraken, and I'm uh, happy to be here. From the Seattle Mariners, folks, please welcome Kyle Lewis. From the Edmonton Oilers, the Seattle Kraken select, Adam Larson. From the Los Angeles Kings, the Seattle Kraken select, Curtis McDermott. <laughs> However, we do have a shark that's about to become a Kraken. And with that, the Seattle Kraken select from the San Jose Sharks. Alexander Trude. Welcome to the safety ownership group. Jerry Bruckheimer, Dave Wright. And Andy Stassi, folks, the people who made this happen. We are the luckiest city in the world to have Ron Francis and his team select our players and be part of this fantastic organization. From the Vancouver Canucks, the Seattle Kraken select, Cole Lind. The six new members of the Kraken who made the journey to Seattle to be joined by... 24 others that make up this historic roster in this brand new NHL franchise and put of this great fan base in this beautiful city. A long time coming. And finally, these guys up here made this happen. And now the team draft board is full. Obviously, there is the issue of competing in the National Hockey League. So we were curious to see what players would be selected. A defensive pair is our top headline. How about Adam Larson and Mark Giordano getting selected by the Kraken? In the case of Larson, we remember him in that one-for-one -one deal with Taylor Hall, who would go on to win for the New Jersey Devils, the Hart Trophy. And for Gio, my goodness, undrafted, but what a career. A Norris Trophy winner in 2018-19. Larson, a real statement that he chose to go there and sign 
What a, what a message. Uh, I think it's a great message, and I, and I think he wants to start over again. And you see Mark Giordano, he's almost at 1,000 games with Calgary, and he's been eight years straight as the captain of that organization. This is going to be a huge change. But I think these two guys are going to be the backbone of this team. Uh, let's go back and look at the last Stanley Cup final game. one nothing. Yep. in on defense and goaltending. Yep. And that's what they've done here. This is a, a pretty good group. Of uh, defense. Any, I'll bet you that you got over half the teams in National Hockey League. I'll take those six ahead of my six any day. This is a good group. Giordano is a true professional. And I think coming to an expansion team, you always hear guys say, hey, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of jump. You, you lose a few years on your birth certificate when you go into an expansion team. And I think that's going to help Mark Giordano. And for Adam Larson, he's a big guy. He's more of a defensive defenseman. He's a physical guy. He ran into some injuries with Edmonton. Uh, and I really think that when he goes and, and puts the jersey on and gets playing, again, he's got lots of talent. He's excellent at moving the puck out of his own zone. He's more known, again, for the physical, the defensive part of the game. But this is a great combination for a 1-2. Experienced defenseman, uh, can play in all situations, are not going to be intimidated by, uh, by anybody in the league. And I think it was very well done. I really like what Jamie Alexiak got in the back end as well. Uh, I, I think the back end right now for Seattle is going to be their strong point. I think it's going to be a defense first team. The next headline, Yanni Gord from the two-time defending Stanley Cup champions. There were some intriguing names that were available off that roster. Julian Brisebois has to say goodbye to that line that was so important, Reader. My goodness, you get the sense that none of them will be back with the blue and white. These were the options. Blake Coleman is going to be heavily sought after. It was Yanni Gord that was the selection. Tyler Johnson has roots in that area. Matthew Joseph, Alex Kalorn, broken leg. Had surgery, tried to go. What a competitor. And then the rest of the names there. Was the right decision made by Ron Francis in going with Yanni Gord? Uh, I believe so. When you watch Tampa Bay play in the playoffs the last two years, win two championships, uh, Yanni Gord was in the middle of everything. Uh, and he puts up points. He may not have been the top scorer, but he was an energy guy. And he was the guy, he was, the, 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 he, he was just stirring things up. And that line with Goodrow, uh, um, uh, they were absolutely phenomenal and dominant. They started every game. Every those game. Those three guys. They started yes. every single game. So when you look at it, what do you want on your team? You need energy. You need players who are going to uh, uh, create a, a momentum for your team. That's Yanni Gord. And the other guys, I thought maybe Alex Kalorn um, uh, and Andre Plot would be the two guys. Tyler Johnson. But when you look at these four players, uh, uh, I think you're looking at uh, the energy of that four of that group. You've got the energy right there. Mm -hmm. Yanni Gord is that player that if you get scored against, you can put him on the ice. If you need a, a forecheck, you put him on the ice. Uh, he, just, he just plays with all sorts of energy, all sorts of speed, and all sorts of skill. And he's at a point in his career uh, where uh, he is, you know, he's fought for everything. He played in the East Coast League. He, and, and he's just battled his way through, played in the American League. He's battled for everything he's got. He's got a nice contract, and now he's got an opportunity to really be a leader on a team where, yeah, we talk about him as a leader on the ice and the way he played, but now he can really take that to another level of leadership and add that onto uh, what is going to be a fantastic career. I, I really see... This young man is wearing a letter and being one of those go-to players that the coach is going to rely on and, and a trustworthy player and say, hey, we need things to settle down or we need things to get going. Yanni Gord is going to be that guy. And even though Plot and Kalorn, uh, they are solid and Johnson, all solid players, uh, when you look at Yanni Gord, you just see that little extra that he brings. And I'm sure Ron Francis uh, felt the same way, and that's why they selected him. It was fascinating to see Gord at the parade when it started raining. He got one of those carts they use for moving that has four wheels on the bottom, and he treated it like a skateboard, and he was rolling around on his stomach. Clearly, the guy's got a lot of energy, and that will be helpful. This team is going to play hard for Dave Haxtell. You look at the energy was the word you used. Speed. Speed and energy on this team. I mean, it starts with the Annie Gord. We want to put him in the number one center position. You don't find more energy. And then you got Brandon Tanev. How about the energy that, that he brings? The speed that these two guys have got and can bring to games. And uh, the, the skating, 
ability when you look through this lineup. Uh, even guys like Don Scoy, a little bit older player, he's got tremendous speed. Colin Blackwell, another player, he's going to have great energy. You talk about getting the fans going. He goes to ugly areas. He gets under the skin of, a, a, of opposing teams. When you've got guys who can skate, <laughs> who can push the pace of the game, and who are willing to get in, in the other team's grill, that is exactly what you want. And that is a great headshot. That is the great. best. He said he saw a ghost. I'm it's not sure what. the best. But these three players can not only put up points, they bring energy to a team. And that's what that, that's what every team wants. And you can say they're perfect third-line guys. They're going to get an opportunity to do more than that with Seattle. As this franchise evolves, there are more players going to come in. We've got a draft coming up on the weekend. There will be trades. There will be free agent acquisitions. And these players are what you want to build your team as. This is a high-energy team with lots of speed up front with good size on the back end and good young goaltending and I think those three players uh, will really uh, kind of lead the direction as far as hey when we're playing this team this is what we have to be prepared for it's going to be speed it's going to be aggressiveness and it's going to be hard on the forecheck and, and those three guys I'm sure will be leading nightly no doubt about it and I love that you use the word aggressiveness I think if I were to select <laughs> one word for Chris Tanev, it would be aggressiveness. Now, the reason he can take that headshot is be I'm sorry, Brandon Tanev, is because he does exactly what Dominic Moore says he does. He hits everything. He does. That's a guy who is fearless on the ice. With great speed. It, it, with tremendous speed, uh, it, uh, there are very few players. It, it, when, he, when he was playing in Winnipeg, I was like, wow, this guy's got to be one of the fastest in the game. And he's still got that tremendous speed. And when you've got that speed and you've got that tenaciousness on a forecheck and you've just got that ability to throw yourself uh, at players kind of recklessly, at times recklessly under control. A lot of players do it recklessly with no control. He has control in his game with his speed. And it's tough to match that. It's terrible to play against a player like that. And like I said, he's, a, he's been that third line, fourth line role because of his energy role. But I think you're going to probably see him on a higher role. I would expect to see him move up and down the lineup until uh, this team finds their, their full direction as they get going forward. But uh, Brandon Tanev is a fun player. And if you look at him, I'm watching. I'm like, where, where, his neck starts about the sides of his shoulders. Yes. Like, I'm sure if he pulls his hair back, he's just all neck. Yeah. He is a force. Uh, of a human, so uh, good for him. It's a great, it's a great opportunity for him to get another oppor uh, to get that extra opportunity, maybe to show more offensive potential than he's been. He's always been that that third line guy playing behind other players. Now he's got an opportunity, maybe to move up in the lineup and produce a little more offense. We saw with Vegas, guys stepped up in Vegas. William Carlson, not saying he's going to be William Carlson, but William Carlson stepped up. It was like, wow, 40 goals. Yep. And is there going to be a player like that? And Brandon Tanev is definitely going to get the opportunity to do more than he's ever done in the past. I love that Reader made that point. Ten goals combined in the last two seasons that William Carlson played before going to Vegas. Then he's a 40-goal scorer. Opportunities abound for the players that were announced tonight. Now... Out of all those forwards, and we just rattled off a bunch of names. Actually, they were rattled off by some pretty famous people. I'm going to put you on the spot. A breakout forward. Can you pick just one out of that whole group that you think is going to break out in season one for this franchise? The, the name that jumped out to me uh, when it was announced, and uh, even you heard names this afternoon, Mason Appleton. Okay. To me, in the Winnipeg Jets, uh, Appleton was a player who was a kind of fell in the depth role and I really think that uh, uh, that he's got great speed he's got high energy and he hasn't shown his true offensive potential he's going to get the opportunity to show his potential and this is this is what expansion drafts and expansion teams are all about it's take players from other teams who are maybe hidden a little low on the depth charts which we know up front for the Winnipeg Jets it's an awful tough lineup to crack the top six and in my mind, Mason Appleton, the Michigan, uh, University of Michigan uh, uh, native, I think he is the type of guy who can get into a top six and he can contribute in a top six. We've seen the flashes that he showed with Winnipeg when he was given that opportunity. Now he might have that opportunity to have a full-time role in the top six and not have to get in and, and worry about, oh, if I make a mistake, I boom, I'm down on, I'm down on the third line. Boom, I'm in the fourth line. Oh, now he's got that opportunity to say, you know what? Here I am. It's a new beginning for me. It's a new organization. These guys believe in me. I'm going to show them that they took me for the right reason. And that is the player, I think, in this out of all this whole lineup who you could say 
hey, if he comes up with 20 goals, it wouldn't be a shocker. Because when he was drafted, he was drafted to be an offensive guy. He was an offensive player, and he's shown that he can be. Now he's going to get the opportunity to do it with Seattle. And what you've said makes sense. We kept hearing throughout the entire night how much analytics played a role. This is an organization that clearly has put a priority on studying the numbers and finding out everything they can. Some very wise choices on this night. When you look at Seattle's rich sports history, you have to include the Seattle Supersonics. The notable facts are these. Entered the NBA back in 67-68, won their only NBA championship in 79. The franchise moved to Oklahoma City in 2008. Gary Payton, the glove, franchise leader in games, assists, and steals. And Sean Kemp, that's right, the Rain Man, franchise leader in offensive rebounds, second in blocks, and such a dynamic presence, always on the boards, getting things done for that Seattle Supersonics team. And what a play it is right now. That's right. On NHL tonight, we have Sean Kemp, one of the great Seattle superstars of all time. Sean, thank you so much for the time. What is the vibe like right now in Seattle? I know Seattle's still home for you. How excited are people to have right. hockey coming to the city? Oh, man, it's the, the, the city's on fire. It's been wonderful the last year and a half, two years around here, waiting for hockey to come in. So, um, I think with the fans knowing that the arena is just about done and ready to open, I think they're getting very excited. And with this draft tonight, this is just going to put it over the top. So it's good times in Seattle right now, absolutely. We've always known it's a great sports town, right, when it comes to whether it's the Mariners, the Seahawks, or the Sounders, obviously, or when you were playing for the Sonics. What is it about Seattle? Why is that community such a great haven for sports? Oh, it's the fans. I mean, absolutely. The fans is what drive the sports around here. The, um, the excitement that you have with the fans, with the Seahawks, the excitement that you have with the Mariners, the history that you've had with the fans around here forever, even before I got here, was uh, tremendous. So I think um, just the years of, uh, of good players coming to Seattle playing with all, all the team sports around here, I think the fans have really been educated on the game of uh, basketball, football, and, and hockey has always been a, a you know, top news story around here. So um, I just think the fans is just the fans. This is a, a city where the, the, these sports are driven by the fans. They're very smart, they're very educated, and they're very on top of things. Sean, Brian Lawton, obviously you just mentioned you're living in Seattle to, still to this day. Right. Why did you settle there? What was so enticing to you about the community? Well, I mean, well, I think this is a city where, you know, truly when I moved to Seattle um, back in 1988, man, this is a city that kind of uh, brought me in, took me under their wings, kind of taught me how to uh, become a man, man, taught me how to become a millionaire, taught me how to, uh, you know, not only just uh, make money, but also save money. And I think uh, those are the, the, the reasons that I stayed around here. I've been married 21 years. My wife is from Seattle. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I work here in Seattle. This is my home. Taught you to make money and save money. Hopefully spend a little money as well. <laughs> absolutely. I've spent too much money. But absolutely, <laughs> I think that, you know, the, the, the most important thing, you know, when you play in ball these days, and I tell this to all the young guys that I see, I mean, just make sure you save some money, man. It, it, we're blessed to be in this position to be able to, to uh, play in front of fans on a daily basis, on a nightly basis, but also just to make sure that you can take care of yourself, your family for a long term, because these chances only go around so many times. Okay, so tell us, what do you know about hockey? Who's your favorite hockey player? We're going to put you on the spot. And what are you most excited mm -hmm. about for this sport? It's physical, the way you play mm -hmm. basketball, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you guys this. I'm, uh, I'm actually from Indiana, where, uh, you know, hockey, hockey is very big in the Michigan, Indiana, the Illinois area. So I actually grew up watching junior hockey, you know, junior hockey. A lot of my friends play junior hockey and stuff, so I... I'm very, very familiar with hockey. It's actually one of my favorite sports. I used to go up to uh, Vancouver, Canada, just, just to watch the Canucks play when uh, when I could get tickets up there. So um, I've been watching the game for, for a long time. I think um, the hockey players are the fastest athletic guys that I've ever seen, especially playing on ice. Um, anytime that you can run that fast, break that hard, change direction, and be able to uh, have the moves that they have these days, I think it's amazing, man. I'm excited for hockey to come here. I'll be at, the, I'll be at a lot of the games for sure. I think Pavel Bure fan may be back with the Canucks. Marcus Nazem, perhaps. We'll see. Uh, yeah, but, a... I will, but, I, but I will. I will. But I will tell you this. I mean, I watched Wayne Goreski a lot of times playing for the uh, Edmonton when I was growing up, and I watched him when he got to the L.A. Kings. He was probably my favorite because he scored a lot. 
But, um, you know, the kid from Pittsburgh that played for Pittsburgh for a lot of years that did a lot of scoring, he became my favorite ultimately. Yeah, Mario Lemieux was pretty special as well. Here's a list of some of the athletes yes. going to be there, Sean. You and Gary Payton, of course, reunited the glove. Sue Bird's going to be there. Love Lenny Wilkins. I mean, Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Bobby right. Wagner, Kyle Lewis, Jordan right. Lewis. I mean, how, how cool is it to see this kind of star-studded talent there in Seattle? <laughs> No, it's great, man. I think uh, this is what this city is built on, man. We have a lot of tradition in sports. Uh, I think it's going to be great to see Sue here tonight. Uh, to me, she's like the, she's one of the greatest athletes of all times around here. She's won two championships. Very suddenly gets talked about. But just in, in, in her long career, she's still balling. I went and watched her play a couple weeks ago. She's still balling really good. Uh, she's got two championships on her belt, so I'm excited to see her tonight here. Last one, we'll get you out of here. Tell us a story about Gary Payton. We know the glove loves to yammer. He loves to talk. What can you tell us Absolutely. about the glove behind the scenes? I will, I will tell you this about Gary Payton, man. As much as he talks, as much as he runs his mouth, man, he's one of the most professional guys that you could ever meet outside of basketball. Gary's always he's always on top of everything, especially business-wise. That's one of the reasons he's the head coach now at Lincoln University, man. He's been about the last several years he's wanted to coach and he's put himself in a good position to coach and i'm looking forward to seeing him coach this year down in lincoln but really i mean outside that mouth and outside that talk he's one of the most smartest professional people i've ever seen in my entire life i love it the six-time all-star the rain man sean kemp thank you so much for joining us man i cannot wait to see the scene in seattle bruce bedro a big fan he's just too shy he couldn't talk to you but thanks so much for giving us a few minutes <laughs> no absolutely man. i appreciate you guys thank you Big and physical. The defensemen are, as a collective group, here's the average size. Six foot three, 211 pounds. Reader, I would say Ron Francis is going to have this team ready to play a heavy and rugged and tough brand of hockey. And they can all skate. And that's one thing that you have to be able to do in the National Hockey League. And it's six foot three. Uh, 211 pounds, that's an excellent average for a defense group. The goaltenders love it when their defensemen are big and they're allowed to uh, box out the front of the net. Just ask Carey Price and the Montreal Canadiens how well that turned out for Good in the point. playoffs when you had the point. big four and you've got a group of defense. Or the Tampa Bay Lightning, for that example, they won with a big four. Same type of thing. Uh, and it's going to be led by Jamie Oleksiak, who is one of the... Uh, he was quoted as... Or not he was quoted, but he was called the heaviest man in the National Hockey League at this point here uh, you go so i think it's i think it's fantastic so you right two teams you. in the stanley cup final are pretty much right at that same positioning so defense wins championships and this is a big group of defensemen who can skate uh who can move the puck well and i would say curtis mcdermott might have the the nastiness in this group oh yeah uh, his father paul was a ex-teammate in Hartford with Way Ron to connect Francis. the dots. Yeah, I played against Paul and Junior played against him in uh, in pro. It wasn't a fun guy to play against and his son's not either. So, but that's today's game. It's going to be interesting as we move along in today's defense. It's uh, every team's got that one smaller defenseman. Is Vince done that guy? I mean, Mark Giordano's only six feet tall. He's under the average. Is he going to be that guy? Or is there going to be a free agent signing or a trade at draft time possibly to add to this mix of that smaller speedy defenseman? But right now, Size and skill and puck moving ability uh, is something that obviously Ron Francis felt was important, and he's got it with this group of defensemen. Kings fans will miss McDermott. He was a fan favorite because of how hard he played and what a tough customer he was. So when you think about Jordan Everly and his production, over a decade in the league, Edmonton and the Islanders, plenty of goals, and a reliable player that fans came to love in both markets. He joins us right now. Seattle Kraken. I read a quote from you that this is your first time back in Seattle since juniors. It sure looks like paradise from here. What's it like to be there? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, you know, obviously the weather's amazing. You get the backdrop behind me, but the, more than anything, it's just the reception that we've gotten with the fans. Um, the turnout, the boats, and um, it's pretty amazing. So I think obviously it's it's a weird experience when you're leaving a team you're coming, but when you get a reception like this, you get excited. Jordan, there was a lot of uh, a lot of leaking, let's say, that went on today of the, of everybody's names uh, who was going to be selected. Uh, how did it? How did you find out 
uh, uh, that you were going to become a uh, Seattle Kraken? Uh, I found out yesterday they called me and I got a call from Lou, our general manager, the general manager in Long Island, and then uh, Ron Francis after. So um, it's been a whirlwind couple of days. Had to get a COVID test quick so that I could make it down for this event. But um, you know, it's been first class so far. And, and uh, you know, once you, you get over the whirlwind and the text and everything, and you get pretty excited. From first class to first all time, your modesty won't say it. But I want to say it because we know that there are Seattle Kraken fans watching. The World Juniors, which is the biggest deal here on NHL Network every single year. Canada, they take hockey seriously. The greatest Canadian World Junior, junior hockey player ever, as selected by a panel of experts a few years ago, is the guy we're talking to, Jordan Eberle. Think about that and all the great players there have been. Now, having said that and embarrassing you that way, I want to ask you what you're looking forward to most about the inaugural season with Seattle. Um, that's a good question. Honestly, I'm, uh, I'm more you know, excited to see who my teammates were today and find out. And I think looking at the group, it's going to be a competitive camp. Um, you know, once we get past that, uh, you know, I, I'm, obviously everyone has expectations as far as how Vegas did their first year, but um, I think if you ask the guys on the team, the coaching staff, the GM, we're going to get to camp. It's going to be a competitive group. We, uh, um, you know, everyone here, it's a new experience for us all and, and, uh, and a new start for everybody. When you get that, you put it together and, and uh, there's going to be a lot of competition for jobs and it's just going to make us better. So first and foremost from that and then, uh, you know, we'll move into the first game. And, and But I think everyone in this organization wants to win and, uh, you know, I'm an exception. Hey, Jordan, just to let you know, uh, I don't know how many times you've interviewed with Tony here, but uh, for Tony to, to pump Hockey Canada and anything <laughs> Canada, especially Junior, not be waving the flag of the uh, the Stars and Stripes <laughs> over here. I mean, that's huge. So you you are you're something special if Tony's speaking that way. You are something special. All right, back to you. Hey, how uh, how's your health? How are you feeling? I mean, the playoffs are a grind, and you guys play that grinding style, or you guys did play that grinding style with the Islanders. How is your health, uh, and how are you uh, getting ready for the off season? And it's going to be a short one. The season will start soon. Yeah, um, yeah, I, you know, I got home a couple weeks ago, and uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's got bumps and bruises. Uh, I was no exception throughout the playoffs, but a um, few weeks off is nice and the rest and just be with the family and enjoy the summer a bit. But yeah, like you said, it's a quick turnaround. Um, started training really this week and um, probably get skating right away, too. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a weird off season with the way that how long we played it, but not only that, but how the, the season went later. So, um, you know, it'll be, I think more than anything, it'll be nice to get a fresh start here in Seattle and, and looking forward to just come down here with my family and, and finding a place and getting settled in. We're excited for you and for the team. Thanks so much for joining us, Jordan. Yeah, thanks for having me. So in a cap world, you're always thinking about the salary cap and how you're going to slice up that pie that is your payroll. Mark Giordano with the highest hit at 6.75. Then you see the rest on the screen. Adam Larson at 4 through 2024 20, 25. We welcome in the guy who made those calls and was part of this incredible spectacle. We'll get to the hockey decisions right away. Rita will ask you about that. I want to ask you first and foremost about how this came together because it was so Seattle, the way you guys weaved in all of the feel of that place. You could not have done a better job of showcasing the Kraken and what you're all about. I wish I could take credit for that, but that's our staff. Our staff has just been incredible. And everything they've done from you know naming our stuff to our brand launch to, to today's event. Uh, the weather couldn't have been any more perfect, and the backdrop was, was outstanding with all the boats in the water and the people in the stands. So very proud to be a part of today. Well, Ron, of the NHL Network, you guys have given us a new game. It's called Where's Weeksy? Because you guys had Weeksy going all over town. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Uh, a fantastic day. And I'm sure a, uh, a big, deep sigh for you to say, all right, here we go. We started. Uh, what was, uh, what was uh, uh, the, the biggest moment for you on, on a day like this uh, when it's all coming together? Well, I think you just look at the, the amount of preparation our staff put into this. And it wasn't an easy process, you know, dealing with COVID as, as uh, we're trying to figure this thing out. But uh, very proud of our group and how hard they worked. And we're really pleased that uh, this is the team we're starting with. And we're excited to get the puck drop in October. I really was impressed when Cami Granado talked about 
the organization and how proud she is to be a part of it, how inclusionary it is, collective, the decisions to make these choices. If you could narrow it down to a couple that were particularly <laughs> difficult, would you be able to do that? Well, I mean, I think every team is different, right? Some teams, you you know, your choice is going to be. Other teams, uh, you know, maybe you're you're, uh, you're in a little bit more of a battle. It could be a forward versus defense. It could be a couple different forwards or a couple different Ds. So uh, every team presents sort of a different problem. But um, as, as Cammy said, I mean, the beauty of this is having everybody feel comfortable in voicing their opinion. Um, you know, we didn't hire them to tell me what they think I want to hear. We hired them to give me their opinion, and, and they did an excellent job of doing that. Uh, throughout this process. Ron, you picked a, a, a pretty large set of defensemen in this group. Was that something that you were uh, focusing on? I mean, your, your history in Carolina had just set up uh, that team with some pretty good uh, mobile defensemen. Uh, was that something that is like kind of set in stone with you or the way you want to build things on defense? Well, I don't think it hurts when you got big guys that can skate, especially in today's game. It makes it a little tougher for guys to get to the net. And, uh, you know, we feel comfortable. We're really excited that the two of those guys were free agents and chose to come with us during this window rather than wait and talk to all the teams in the National Hockey League on the 28th. So it says a lot about uh, what we're trying to build here. And, and you saw some of that today with the, uh, the enthusiasm in our fans and the beauty of our city. You get to exhale for about a second. And then you've got the entry draft and certainly teams that are going to be calling. For you, what's your highest priority now that this is behind you? Well, certainly Friday night, we have the number two pick overall in the draft, and, and uh, you want to make sure we get that right, and then two through seven on Saturday. So uh, I'm sure we'll be fielding some calls and some of the players we have in the next couple of days, but our focus uh, is making sure we get that uh, those, those picks right on the weekend. You could not have done a better job with this event. Congratulations to you and your team. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Our fans here are just waiting for us, anxious for this day. And here it is. The boy, boy, Cali, though. Jamie Alexia. Forward, Jared McCann. Newest member of the Seattle Kraken, Jordan Everly. This is the first time in my career I've ever been drafted, so happy to be here. It's not too many times you get an opportunity to start with a new franchise. Just flew in this morning, so getting to see the city a little bit. It's really exciting to be here. Be the first thing I thought about was mask design. The gears are turning for sure. I could not be more pumped up to welcome this brand new team. These players will always be the original Seattle Kraken.